It's super to be here today. Amen. Amen. Well, I'm glad to see you and uh, love your your man of God here and praise the Lord for him. And uh, I just uh, I'm so blessed and uh, to get to know him and and to see his church here and you folks and I'm going to move this away from me. Okay, I might knock it off of here or something. You know, sometimes I get excited. But uh, one thing, uh, this morning somebody met me and he said, uh, I'm, you're, you're 92 years old and I'm only 85. And I said, now, I don't know what you've been spreading around here, brother. I don't know. <laughs> I'm only 82, okay? I'm a young man. I just don't. But anyway, that was interesting. And, uh, you know, Brother Woodward and... Manly Perry, who I love very much, I was down in Texas this year preaching for him and had a great, great time. I'm talking and turning my Bible at the same time. But uh, listen, this message I've never heard from anybody. It's uh, not new, but it's in the Bible, and, and I'm excited about it. And I want you to go to Psalm chapter 1, Psalm chapter 1. My son was preaching, and he's, like I said, the pastor of the church now. And he was worried about me, what I would do when he became pastor. And then if I would uh, just kind of sit around, I said, listen, I'll keep myself active. And uh, I said, uh, I go out soul winning every t- uh, Tuesday night, Thursday night, and Saturday. Okay? And uh, so I don't run out of things to do. And I preach on Wednesday night, and I, I teach the adult Sunday school class and, and travel Wherever anybody wants me to come, and some people want me to come just once, and then they don't have me come back anymore. I don't know why. But um, anyway, the thing about it is that, uh, you, you know, you can get in trouble. I've been chewed out and all kinds of things. When I was at Manly Perry's church, I was preaching away, and I said something about Jehovah's sicknesses. I said, boy, it's terrible how they go out there, and I, and I feel sorry for them and everything. All of a sudden, a lady in this church jumped up and yelled at me. She just jumped up and yelled at me, and and all the people went like, and I said, and I just laughed. I said, oh, don't worry about it, folks. I've had other people mad at me because I preached the truth. <laughs> Didn't shake me up. And her husband stayed, so uh, that was a good thing. I think if men stand strong for the word of God, they'll win their wives. Amen? And, uh, and uh, well, let's go to Psalm chapter 1, verse 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of scorners. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in the law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by rivers of water that bringeth forth his uh, fruit in, in season. His leaf shall not uh, wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Let's pray. God and Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for the word of God. Thank you for this congregation, this church. I just pray you bless them. God, use your word today in Jesus' name. Amen. Listen, I was sitting in church one day, and I, I always bring a notebook. I think we ought to bring a notebook to church. Anything that's important, I think we ought to have tr- keep track of. You know, the thing is about this, you say, well, I, you know, remember, when I went to college, I took notes, okay? And all the way through, we, they, we took notes because we had an exam coming. And the thing is about this, uh, I don't care who's preaching, I don't care uh, what it is, I like to write things down and go over it, you know, and see what God puts on my heart, and I haven't heard a message yet that doesn't stir me up. If some preach on John three sixteen, I get excited about it, okay? And the thing is about this, I encourage that, and I, I've said to everybody through the years, they said, I went through some real, 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 real struggles and ministry and problems. I had a church of uh, that I took that was had 50 people in it. In five years, we had 500 some. And then we had a church split, okay? And uh, I came to church with uh, $28,000 in the bank because I had I had uh, rebuilt that house and resold it and came in and we bought some land. And, and when that church split came, I had $36. And they called me Jim Jones and Khomeini and I don't know what other names. But anyway, uh, you know, it's not, people aren't always excited about the truth. And one of the biggest things they didn't like about it was soul winning. If you want to get on, want to get anybody stirred up, it's over soul winning. Jesus said, if you follow me, I'll make you fishers of men. Amen. Did he not say that? He said, the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost part of the earth. I, had, I was out uh, witnessing in a, in, in a restaurant. I was talking to people, going to table to table, just talking to them, making trouble. And, uh, 
And uh, 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 this one lady said, oh, I'm Pentecostal and we have it over on you people. And I said, what is that? She said, we have the Holy Spirit. And I said, uh, well, when I got saved, I trust the Lord Jesus and God promised when he comes in, I have the Holy Spirit. But uh, I said, let me, uh, let, me, let me ask you what you mean by that. I said, uh, when did you lead anybody to Christ? I said, anybody last week? And she said, no. I said, last month? No. Last year? And she stopped talking to me. And the thing is about this, if we have, if we follow Jesus, he said, he'll make us fishers of men. And if we aren't winning people to Christ, who are we following? Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. And I think it's super exciting to lead people to Jesus Christ and get them out of the, the power of hell. That's right. And one of the words I say a lot is super, okay? And I don't know any other words, so I say super. I call everybody super. I don't know their name. I just say, how you doing, super? <laughs> and, uh, and I say super because we're going to heaven. Amen. Good night. Before I get into this preaching, we're going to heaven. Amen. We ought to have a smile on our face. We ought to be excited. You say, yeah, but I got a lot of problems. So do I. I make a lot of problems too. And the thing is about this, listen to me now. I just had a, a, a nephew die a couple of weeks ago, found him dead, okay? Had his funeral. I had a, two years ago, I had a grandson die, 19 years of age. My daughter found him dead, okay? I had a grandson die at 18 months. And um, held his little body there and saw all the blotches on him from uh, meningitis. And I said, God, you give me the grace to do his funeral. And he did. And 20 some people got accepted the Lord. And uh, I used to always throw him up in the air. And catch him you know. And, and uh, he'd always want to come to Papa. And I always, and when I went to see him. that He was unconscious. And I said Papa's here. Papa's here. And he wasn't responding. He took him off to the hospital. And I said when I get to heaven. He's going to throw me up in the air. And then he's going to catch me. Okay. It isn't over. Uh, uh, when we go to heaven. It's it all starting. That's when real life is starting. Okay. And I, I think we ought to be excited about that. Ah, this old body's breaking down and, and it doesn't work like it used to. And I used to go out uh, wrestling and boxing and weightlifting and all that kind of stuff. Now I'm, I'm happy if I can get up off the floor. Okay? All right. <laughs> Amen. But that means I'm getting closer to heaven. Are you excited about that? Amen. I want to hear super. 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 I said, are you excited? Super. 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 Super! All right. Okay, now we can get started. Okay, now I feel at home. All right? But listen to me now. My, my son was preaching one day, and uh, I was taking notes, and all of a sudden, this came to my head. Trees don't run. And I thought, trees don't run. So I wrote it down. You know, sometimes think, you never get back again sometimes. You think of something, and if you don't write it down, you don't get it back. And I kept thinking about trees don't run. And I thought, that's... What's that all about? So I started following trees through the Bible, you know. And, uh, and it says here, He shall be like a tree planted by rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season, and his leaf also shall not wither, but whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Okay? Now look, if we think about what it, God is saying here, to me this is super exciting. Because... Trees like a, like a tree planted by rivers of water. You ever see these trees that are close to water? Amen. Mm. And they just grow and grow and they grow fast and they grow strong. And and uh, the, what's our rivers of water? The Word of God, the Holy Spirit in us. Amen. Mm. And He said we'll be like a tree like that, and it bring forth this fruit in season. Every tree has fruit, different kinds of fruit. Uh, uh, they come forth in blossoms and seeds and. And fruit we eat and all those kind of things, but they re reproduce their own kind. I want us to think about that. Amen? And the thing is about it, and, and, and his leaf shall not wither, but whatsoever he do shall prosper. Okay? I want you to think about this a little while. If, if he delights in the law of the Lord, that means the word of God. If we delight in the law of, of God, we drive into things that he has for us, the exciting things. And we follow him, and we delight in that. I'll tell you something. I have a Bible here. It's all wore out. Pages are falling out. I have another Bible. It's, it's getting beat up. I just got it and it's getting all beat up. And I have it colored. All kinds of colors in here, you see. And uh, different uh, themes that I color as I went through the Bible, okay. 
And uh, the reason I colored went my Bible, because when I went to college, I majored in coloring, okay? So the thing is, <laughs> and so the thing is about it is that as we go and follow the word of God and we obey the Lord, okay? And, uh, and so we've got to think about this. If we stay in the word of God and he's, his word is the light to us, we're not going to get caught up with all these different groups, okay? He's not going to, hey, we're not going to go to the counsel of the ungodly. We'll get counsel of the word of God. We'll get counsel of those that love God. So people going off to, I have a degree in psychiatric social work. Aren't you impressed with that? <laughs> yeah. I, have a, I, I went to the University of Wisconsin and got this wonderful degree. And it's a bunch of garbage. But anyway, uh, but the thing is about it, uh, I was working with Jewel Linquins and I had to have a degree to, you know. And so I got it and had to go through that. But anyway, the, the, you don't listen to counsel. They would say things, I think, but God says, but God says, but God says. And I got in trouble there also. I had a, I had a, 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 a an instructor, uh, and, uh, in a, a, a detention center. And he gave me a, a booklet and it said uh, about different people's values. His name was Arnie Blonick. I still remember his name from many years ago because he impressed me so. And the thing is about it, he went to a Lutheran church in town. And I said, Arnie, don't you think I, I went through, I went through uh, Bible college. I said, I went through, I went through regular college. I went through, I, I'm in my last semester in graduate school. And I said, don't you think I know there's all kinds of values? I said, Arnie, let, look at me. I said, buddy, the only values that count are the values of God and the word of God. And boy, he blew up. And I said, you're a big phony. You go to that church in there. You don't believe any of it. And a bunch of graduate students were in there and they all left. They thought something was going to blow up. I don't know why they felt that way. But anyway, <laughs> anyway, the thing about this is this. We don't sit in the council of the ungodly. We don't get our information from the council of the ungodly. We got so much garbage today. Uh, we just had the, the, our governor of the state of Illinois just signed a bill for abortion. And it, it, and I understand it includes abortion up to the day before they're born. Can you imagine that? How ungodly our country has gotten? Amen. Nor standeth in the way of sinners. That you don't join the sinners. You're not in their way. You're not, you're not going their way. Amen. Nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. And that's one of the tragedies, uh, uh, in America. And one of the tragedies even in our churches. So we say, well, they, I, you know, they did this wrong and they did that wrong. Why don't you take care of yourself? If, if I, if I go sowing, that doesn't make me greater than anybody. It's a privilege. Okay. And I think we all ought to be soul winners. Everybody, every single Christian ought to be a soul winner. But if somebody else doesn't go, I don't, I don't look down on them. I don't crab at them. I just go out and do what God wants me to do. And I love that person. And hopefully by the excitement that I find in the Lord Jesus Christ and the preaching of the word of God, they'll get on fire themselves. Because that's one thing that I see all over the place. You see thousands and thousands of people on television on television. And the, and, and, and the thing is about that, and they're listening, but nobody is sharing the gospel. Yeah. Yeah. I told your pastor this morning, I talked to the lady at the counter at the motel, and she prayed with me and asked the Lord to be her Savior. Amen. I just walked up to her and I said, how are you doing today? I said, do you know if you're going to heaven or not? And she said, oh, don't even ask me that. I'm having a terrible day. I said, I'll make you a good day. And I told her how to be saved. You know what? She thanked me. For sharing the gospel with it. Boy, that really, that's a lot of persecution, isn't it? Mm. Oh boy, I just suffered so much for that. Come on. I've had people yell at me. I was in a parking lot of a, of a grocery store years ago. And uh, it was called Pick and Save. And do you have any of those around here? Pick and Save stores? Well, anyway, there's some around us. And, and I was in the parking lot and the manager came out and said, You can't do that here. You can't do that here. I said, What do you, what do you mean why I can't do that? I'm just talking to people in the parking lot about... Jesus and how they might get saved. And he said, if you do that, I'm calling the police. I'm going to have you arrested. And I said, I, I, you know, it upsets me because your sign says pick and save. And I'm picking out people and getting them saved. And you're kicking me out. <laughs> so anyway, amen. I, didn't, I need to get this message, okay? But uh, we, we, we don't have to follow the crowds. And he, our delight is in the law of the Lord. Our delight is in the word of God. And as we go on. 
And I have to, I say all over and over again, we've got to stay in the word of God. We've got, you say, well, I go to church on Sunday morning. I go to church Sunday night. I go to Sunday school. I go to Wednesday night. I go to all these kind of things. Hey, listen, this is your food and your strength. I got saved 60 years ago. And I've stayed in the word of God. And what a blessing it is. There's always something new. This message I'm preaching today, I just came to my heart last year and or this year in about February or so. I don't know exactly when, but I'm excited about it. Okay. So the thing is about this is as we go on here, it says, whatsoever you do is you'll prosper. Now I'm not a prosperity preacher. Okay. You give so much money and God will give you so much money back. And you know, and boy, anybody would do that. Amen. But, uh, it's not to get rich. Amen. And not to get glory. But whatsoever we do, so prosper, what does he mean? As we draw from the word of God, as we draw from the Holy Spirit, we're going to touch people that are going to be blessed. We're going to touch people that's hearts are going to be changed and people are going to be transformed by the power of God. And we lift up the Lord Jesus and give him the glory. That's the prosperity. Uh, nothing here is going to last. Amen. So I'm excited about it. All right. So. As we go on here, but I want to, I, I was thinking about this a lot and I thought, good night. Let's look at planting. It's like a tree planted. I want you to think about that for a little while. In my yard, I got a, every tree in my yard is I planted. And a neighbor uh, planted some evergreen trees behind their house and they were about this big years ago and now they're about 40 feet high. And it, and it says here that he's like a tree planted. You know what? I go out. In the morning, and I never go out in the yard. I never go out and look around in the yard like this and say, wonder if all my trees stayed in the yard last night. <laughs> and I'm, oh, my, my apple tree is over there in that neighbor's yard. What in the world are you doing over here? I planted you over there and get a car and, and, and some tra- chains and things and drag that tree back. And then another tree is another neighbor's and some, another one way down and went in town someplace. I had to go find it and, and search all over for it and drag it back. Trees stay planted. Amen. Now listen to me now. Well, you say, what are you making such a big deal out of that? Hey, you know what? Your preacher was called here. Amen. Hello? And so were you. You got what I'm saying to you? There's a lot of people that go to church <coughs> and they never stay. I've seen so many families destroyed because somebody got uh, uh, out of sorts and, and and they left the church and they went down the road someplace to some more liberal church. And most of the time their kids are all messed up. Most of the time their their family falls apart. They get divorced. All kind of things go on. You're out of sorts. I remember a family in our church. Oh, the little kids. Uh, they had, they made church. I love my preacher. You know, they made little shirts for him and everything. And then Mama got upset one day, and she went out the door. Daddy and the kids. We're all in church. He said, I'm not going. I said, good. For well, a little while, daddy followed mama. And the whole family is gone. They're not living for Lord, not one of them. I thought that's sad. Now, folks, preachers don't do everything right. I'm not always sweet and kind like I am now. All right? But the thing is about this, hey, God called me to Beach Park, Illinois. When that church split, I said, okay, God called me here. He didn't call me someplace else. So I started another church. And when I started the church, I went from 500 some to 30 people. And my name was Jim Jones and Khomeini, like I said, and everything else. Because I stood for the word of God. Stood for soul winning, separation, standards, all those things. And they said, you'll never start a church here. And gossip was spread all over the place, all kind of thing. And I said, well, God will decide. I ended up with $36. I didn't know what in the world the next dime was going to come from. So I wrote to all my friends and thought they would just help and support. And, I, and somebody gave me $25, but that was all I ever got. But, uh, <laughs> you know, everybody, I, and I know everybody's got their ministry, got their things on their heart. And, you know, you can't go. You go around and help support everybody and, you know, but the thing is about this, hey, God took care of us. My honey's here today and uh, we've been married 58 years, okay? And uh, we got four children and 14 grandchildren and, 
and nine great-grandchildren, okay? So we got a whole troop, okay? So the thing is about this, but he says he'll prosper. And, and we'll reach people, and God will bless. Amen? And I've got like uh, ten preachers out of our church now. Hello? And uh, God has blessed us. And I'm excited about that. But uh, there's so many people, they're not like trees planted, that's for sure. They get upset over uh, some little stinking thing. Come on now. We ought to grow more than that. Babies in the nursery, you know, they give them toys and they all fight for the same one. We're not here for our glory. You know, one of my favorite verses is, I am crucified with Christ, and unless I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me, and the life which I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me. Amen? And gave himself for me. Listen to me now. Dead people don't have any requirements. You see, if you're dead, I've never gone to a funeral yet where the guy in the casket said, I, you weren't my friend in life, get out of here. I never had him say, this casket's not comfortable. I never had him complain about anything or anybody or, uh, you know, uh, none of that. Dead. They're not there anyway, but, but the thing is about this is that, uh, and so the thing is about it, if you're dead in Christ Jesus, nobody can offend you. You can't offend a dead person. I don't have any rights anyhow. Everything goes on in my life is up to God. Okay? And then I'm going to find out what God is going to do with it. Hello? So the thing is about this, my wife last summer was in the hospital almost all summer long for a heart operation. And we died, uh, she was in, she ended up uh, one hospital and they sent her another hospital. Operation didn't work. She went back to the that first hospital and they, the head surgeon said, I can't do that. And they sent her to Chicago and she was in Chicago for 16 days. And I drove back and forth to Chicago every day for 16 days. And then she went to rehab and she's here now and now she's dangerous, she's got that cane, and I have to pay, behave myself, okay? But the thing is about this, but so many people, know what they're like? They're like bunny rabbits. Hopping from one church to another, is that right or not? Oh, they go to the, and I ask people when they come to church, why are you here? What's your doctrinal issue? Well, so-and-so, I said, don't tell me stuff about why you're mad at the preacher, why you're mad at people in the church, you're going to get at this preacher, you're going to get mad at this preacher and other people too because we're all a bunch of mixed up, messed up sinners saved by the grace of God. Mm-hmm. And I said, don't come here. And, and some people leave and they say, well, I left quietly because I don't want to cause any trouble. Did you hear that one? Mm-hmm. But they leave little bunny rabbit raisins behind them. <laughs> <laughs> right? Oh, they don't see that. Then somebody calls them asking, why do you leave the church? Blah, 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 blah. Why do you leave the church? Blah, 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 blah. Bunny rabbit raisins. <laughs> Pretty soon I'm supposed to go to Australia and preach, and they'll be over there. I'll be kangaroo. Well, there won't be raisins, but anyway. <laughs> but the thing is about that, that's exactly what happens. Folks, we're here to live for the Lord Jesus Christ. You're planted Stay, 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 stay. You got a good church, you got a good preacher, let's build something for Jesus Christ. Amen. You can't build anything with people running all over the place. Uh, of all these, these uh, blocks and these buildings we're leaving, it would fall apart. Now folks, I'm telling you something, this is very, very serious. Trees are a picture of power in the Word of God. Hello? They're a picture of strength. When we think of Nebuchadnezzar's kingdom, what was it a picture of? What was the vision of a tree? Amen? Let's go to Daniel chapter 4. Let's go to Daniel chapter 4. <laughs> when, I, when I think of this, I always think of how that when Jehovah's Witnesses go out, they argue about Jesus didn't die on a cross, he died on a tree. Well, a couple places in the Bible it says a tree. In our place it says the cross. Okay? Now, what's the difference? That's like somebody saying, I built my house out of wood. And someone said, no, I built mine out of lumber. <laughs> Instead of fighting over the, why, why he died on the cross, they're fighting over what he died on. Mm-hmm. Satan's distraction. Yep. He died, therefore, to, to bless us, shed his blood for us. He loves us. Let's go to Daniel 4.10. Okay? 
And Daniel's telling about this, this, we're talking about this vision. And, uh, it says here, and there was a vision in my head in my bed and I saw a, behold what? A tree in the midst of the earth and the height thereof was great and the tree grew and was strong and the height thereof reached unto the heavens and the sight thereof was of the end of the earth <clears throat> and the leaves thereof were fair and the fruit thereof much and in it was, was meat, uh, for all the beasts of the field and had uh, shadow under it. And, and the fowls of heaven dwelt in the boughs thereof, and all and the flesh, and all flesh was fed of it. Now listen to me: the fowls of the air. Every time you hear that, again, fowls in the word of God are what birds. Birds uh, are used as demons and devils in the word of God that steal away the word of God, except for the dove. Amen. And so, the thing is, and I saw the visions of my head, and uh, in my bed, and behold, and a watcher, a holy one came down from heaven, and he cried aloud and said, Hew down the tree, cut off the, his, his branches, shake off his leaves, scatter the fruit, let the beast get away from under it, and the, the fowls from its branches, and nevertheless leave the stump of his roots in the earth, with even a band of iron and brass and, and tender grass of the field. And we go about, and he goes on and tells about how that, that was a picture of Nebuchadnezzar's kingdom. Amen. And he wanted to, he wanted Nebuchadnezzar to know and others to know that God rules in heaven. Amen. In verse seventeen, in the matter by the decree of the watchers and demand of, of the word of the holy ones, to intend that he, the living may know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men and give it to whomsoever he will, and settleth settle on over over it the the the, the uh, basis of men. So he broke down. Nebuchadnezzar's kingdom and Nebuchadnezzar broke down and learned that God ruled in heaven. Amen? Amen. Powerful kingdom. Powerful kingdom time. The most powerful kingdom on the face of the earth. A picture of a tree. And we could go on in the word of God. And when he talks about us, we want to be, I want to be like a tree. Powered by God. I want to, I want to feed on the word of God. I want to keep going until God takes me off the face of the earth. I said to my folks, when I die, I hope God gives me enough strength at the end that I can get up on my bed and jump up and down and scream and yell, Amen, I'm going home, and then drop over dead, okay? And, uh, but uh, we delight in the law of God, and He blesses us, and, and we know in the, in the Word of God, He tells us also about the kingdom of heaven. And, and, uh, and uh, let's go to Luke chapter 13 now, just for a moment. Luke chapter 13. I'm not going to get through all this this morning. When I put it all together tonight, but uh, in Luke chapter thirteen, if I can get there fast enough, <clears throat> thirteen nineteen, it tells us here. He's talking about the kingdom, and he's talking about it is like a grain of mustard seed, which is a man took and cast into its uh, garden, and it grew and waxed a great tree. And the fowls of the uh, of the air lodged in the branches of it. Real picture of false Christianity. What happened? We got the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, and then all of a sudden, the fowls came, the false doctrine, and all the things. And all of a sudden, they grew into a tree. Mustard seed is not to grow into a great tree. Hello, with fowls of the air to dwell in it. Wickedness. Just a little while ago, I was preaching in Honduras. Somebody said, are you going to go to Honduras, the highest crime rates in the world? And I said, we've got missionary family there, mom and daddy, two teenage sons, and a 10-year-old girl. I guess she's not that old. I guess her birthday now, she just turned nine, but I said 10. But anyway, I said, if, if they're there all year, I can go there for two weeks and preach. And I said, not only that, I can get to heaven from Honduras. So somebody kills me, so what? <laughs> Amen? And so I went there. And a lot of people were worried about me going there. And I saw people get saved. I saw a drunkard came in, uh, sat in about the second row. And, uh, and, and when I gave the invitation, he raised his hand to trust Jesus. Now, he'd been drunk every single day. They were there for about a year, wandered on the streets. And I think he was just a little bit tanked up when he was there. But he hasn't had a drink since. He's been in every service. Had a girl 19 years old. And she was... We, the preacher asked her, are you going to heaven? She said, oh yeah, I got saved a year ago in the Catholic Church. Though when she explained it, it was all mixed up, of course. And I sat down with her, 
Young lady, let me share something with you. And I told her how to be saved, how she could come to know Christ. All of a sudden, she just started busted out crying. And she said, you mean I can know Jesus? I can know I'm going to heaven. All my sins will be forgiven. 19-year-old girl. Little bitty thing about this tall, I think. And she just thanked God, and she wept and wept. And I thought, man, when, I, when have I seen that in America last? And she was crying and thanking God, and she hugged me about 10 times over. And I said to her, I got 14 grandchildren. And I said, I got another one now in Honduras. And she still asked how I'm doing. How's that old preacher doing? And is he coming back? Folks, I'm telling you, God brings us together. Amen? And God does wonderful things. But you know what? In Honduras, you know that? You know, the, you know how the Catholics got all the word? Do you know the history of that? They went around with Spanish, Spaniards went all over. And the Portuguese went all over. And they went around, they went around and, and uh, they conquered nations. They got all over the world. They, when I was in the Philippines, they had forts over there. In the Philippines, when I was preaching over there. And they went around and they murdered people. They raped people. They took their money. They built their big castles. Hello. And they said, you want to be free? Join the church. Become a Catholic. And the priest will forgive you. That's how it got over there. And I'll tell you, Honduras is filled with gangs, murders, all kinds of garbage, all kinds of filth, prostitution, and all kinds of things like that. We've got a message to get out that is exciting. And if people don't want it, and and they get mad at us, so what? You know what? I got it. Well, some of these people just don't want to hear. Who cares if they want to hear or not? Hello? Good night. Folks, I got got so many. Some people say to me, a lot of people will, will thank me. Some they'll be gracious. They'll just try to get me away. I can tell, you know, okay, thank you very much. I'll see you, see you. And, and, and all kinds of things. And some get mad. I was in a McDonald's restaurant and, and the man was with his family said, can't you see we're eating? I said, oh, I didn't recognize that. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, people get mad at me and they yell, say, they yell at me and say, hey, Thank you. Man, that was wonderful. Such a blessing. You, you blessed me so. What are you talking about? He said, well, God says, if you hate me for my name's sake, great is your word in heaven. And I said, man, you just blessed me. Thank you again. And, <laughs> oh, boy. They don't know what to say to that kind of stuff. They look at like, blah, blah, blah. And, and, uh, and the thing is about this, have fun. Just have fun. Enjoy Jesus. Amen. Amen. He loves us. He died for us. Why could, how could we be ashamed of him? He is not ashamed of our, us pitiful sinners. And even after we say we are a mess, yep. we still got a stinking old nature. We still got that same old temptations and all the other things. It's just that as we stay in the word of God, we walk with him. We can, we, they don't have to be in control of us. Mm-hmm. We got the same garbage that comes through our brains. So the thing is about this, we stay in the word of God and God get, makes us like a tree. And you know, we can go, go, go all the way back to the Garden of Eden, right? There's a tree there. God said, don't touch it. I don't eat of it, rather. <laughs> don't, don't, don't eat of that tree. They did anyhow. And we can get ourselves in a lot of trouble. Isn't that right? But thank God that he always forgives us if we have a repentant heart and we call on God. Isn't that wonderful? Thank God that he didn't say to them, hey, you disobeyed me, you're done. He didn't say that. But they did lose on a lot of blessings. And we lose on a lot of blessings. There's another tree there. Remember that tree? What was that other tree? Tree of life. I'm going to talk about that tree. We went over there and where they, where they were and we hunted around there and we tried to find that tree of life. Could we find it? It's not there. We wouldn't find it. He had, some, he, had, he had it guarded, but it's not there. I'm going to talk about that tonight. But uh, it's an exciting thing. But the devil would have us get all wound up in all kinds of garbage. Amen? And make us think that, you know, if we go to church, we'll be good enough. If we do this, we'll be good enough. We'll do that, we'll be good enough. We'll never be good enough. Hello? Some people, you heard the baptism this morning. Uh, some of you think if I get baptized, uh, I'll be good enough. 
You know what kind of interesting? Jesus died on the cross so we could get baptized? <laughs> what in the world? I, why would he die on the cross? He just tells us to get baptized, right? And, and, and we've got to learn to defend the word of God. Amen? Amen. My goodness. Super exciting. I don't know. I'll keep looking at the clock. What time you you stop here? Uh, what? Where? Little afternoon. Okay, that's uh, till midnight then, right? right. <laughs> All right. That's I know because I want to. I don't want to. But anyway, when I think of that, when I think of that, First Corinthians one twelve, it says, "Now I say that every one of you said, I am of Paul." And I'm of Apollos, and I'm of Cephas, and I'm of Christ. Christ is, is Christ divided. Somebody said that's denominated. No, there's great men of God that the devil is trying to divide one against the other. Amen? Was Paul crucified for you? Were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you except Cephas and Gaius, and in baptism saved us, he left some people behind. Lest any should say that I baptize my own name. And I baptize also the household of Stephanus. Besides, I know not whether I baptize any other. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. That's pretty clear, isn't it? He makes a real separation from the gospel and baptism. Not with the wisdom of the words of, uh, uh, of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made none effect. For the preaching of the cross to them that perish is foolishness, but unto us which are saved it is the power of God. We've got to start with being people being born again, saved, cleansed by the blood. Amen. Then we do things for him because we love him. We take communion because we love him. Amen. We glorify him because we love him. And there's a new law that's in our bones. It's called the law of love. And we trust him by faith. And we can grow and become strong, and, but not self-righteous. God hates pride. Now listen, before I close this, what should we be known for? Should we be known for our separation? Should we be known for, and that's a good thing. Should we be known for our soul winning? That's a good thing. Should we know because we read the Bible? That's a good thing. But what should we really be known for? Love and faith. The greatest of these is love. So I'm saying this because I've gone to churches and they're so proud of the fact that they do all these things. They simply tell the person next to you you love them. Tell the people that come in the church you love them. Put a smile on your face. Man, I see people coming in church sometimes and it's, they scare me. I think the undertaker looking for the dead body and they keep looking at me all the time, you know, and it makes me scared. No, but isn't that true? Come on. You said, but I got problems. Do you know the person next to you has got problems? Do you know the person next to you has got heartaches? We just had a loved one here that died. We ought to be showering those people with love. The people coming off the street, you know, they got long hair and and pink hair and blue hair and beads and all kind of... I was in the McDonald's one day and I saw this guy had red... Uh, not red, pink hair, just sticking up. And he had all kinds of jewelry on. And another guy had a leather jacket on. He had medals all over his leather jacket. And another guy sitting there. And you look at him and say, well, that's disgusting. They're lost. Yep. That's the devil. Mm-hmm. You know, when I talked to him about the Lord Jesus, you know what? They're much more gracious than a lot of people that look nice mm-hmm. were. And you know what they did? They thanked me for They didn't accept the Lord, but they thanked me. You understand that? Hello? Now I've had some, I've had some sweet little kind little old ladies sometime and say, I'd like to give you a track. <laughs> and some, they sound like a little chihuahua, you know. And I thought, what in the world? <laughs> Hello? Amen? <laughs> I got my religion. My my mother in law wasn't too happy when my wife got saved. She was a my my wife was a good Lutheran and she still is. No, uh, the, the, and and and, uh, and when I uh, first time we dated, I asked her if she was going to heaven. I don't remember that she does, but the thing is about that. Her mother, you left our religion. You left this, and she and, and my wife said, "No, I didn't. I didn't leave religion. I I just came to know Jesus." But you know what? We would tell her mother over and over again, and she would, was upset at first. 
And she came to us in a storm, winter storm. And when she was young, she was in a terrible car accident. Her, her, she was going to get married to this guy, and he got killed. Another couple that were that got killed, and she lived, and she had big scars on her legs from that. And she came to us in a snowstorm. And I took her out. We took her to different places. We knew people that loved the Lord, and we'd be talking about Jesus. There was a man. He was an old man. He had uh, said, I want to read you uh, Hebrews 11. He just started saying he had memorized Hebrews 11. He was old. He was about 80 years old. I mean, he was old. <laughs> and the thing is about it is that, and we went to another place. And when she got home that night, another man that was just terribly into all kinds of stuff. He only had a third grade education. with memorized, I think, most of the first, the, the, the New Testament. He just loved the Word of God. We brought him over there, and he was giving testimony. How he got saved. And my mother-in-law came, and we came into the house. And she was very quiet, and she looked at me, and she said, Tears start coming down her face. And she said, Ron, I need to get saved, don't I? And I said, yes, Mom. And we'd, we kneeled in the living room together. And she prayed. And man, I'm telling you, and she was not ashamed of Jesus. Amen. When she went to the nursing home, she had tracks in her wheelchair. Hmm. And she couldn't hear very good, so she would talk very loud. And she'd say, Ron, that lady over there needs to get saved. <laughs> so I'd go over there. <laughs> and, uh, and you know, God's working. But don't give up. Don't quit on people. Just shower them with love. Shower them with love and do things for them and keep on going, you know. And then tell them the truth and tell them the truth and tell them the truth until they get saved. Amen. We got a blessed thing. And I read all those things about people getting their heads chopped off in the Middle East because they're Christians. And I said, good night. Folks, we got it made. And we're soft. We're babied in America. God blessed us and we're still, we're just like they were going after the blessings instead of the blesser. I think a lot of repentance has to be done in our fundamental independent Baptist churches. I think we got to start thinking about people and, and, uh, and, and never, hey, I've said this over and over. If my head gets bigger than this, I'm only a sinner saved by the grace of God. My head is too big. Only a sinner saved by the grace of God. And only by the grace of God am I still here today. Only by the grace of God am I preaching the word of God today. And we need to stay in the word of God so that we'll be, that we'll be like a tree that's planted. Staying. Staying with the stuff called and, 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 and doing the work of God. And one of the easiest things that we can do is love people and, 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 and trust God. Yes, we got problems. I could tell you all kinds of problems today that I have. You want to hear them? No. Nobody wants to hear our problems anyhow. But the thing is about this, listen, there's a Jesus that died for us on Calvary. And our problems are nothing compared to going to hell. Hello? And I told people, if I, if, if I go someplace and they chop my head off, I won't lose anything. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but you know, he gives us you know, he, he gives us, when he, when he takes over, you know, he, he gives us, doesn't give us a spirit of fear. What does he give us? Psalm 9, what else? Power and love. Hey, listen, you ever do something that you think about later, why did I do that? I, we, we had a, there's a preacher of our church, his daddy came to visit him from, from a, Michigan, his dad was unsaved. His dad accepted the Lord the night he came to our church service. And uh, he said, let's go over to the restaurant tonight and let's, let's, uh, let's have a kind of a going away thing for him. I said, I can't come here. I got some people I have to meet with, but I'll come over there, okay? He said, all right. So the church people went over to the restaurant over there in Waukegan. And uh, I came there. And as soon as I, I walked in the door, some guy came running in and said, somebody lock that door. Somebody lock that door. They're going to kill me. They're going to kill me. And I, I looked and I thought, what in the world? And he ran past me. He ran behind the counter and went into the kitchen. And right behind him came three guys. One guy was a mouth and this guy's big. Like, where is he? And there's two other guys. They had been drinking. We're going to kill him. We're going to kill him. And they went running back there. And I ran around to the, where, the, where the waitress come out in the back. And I came out through the other door into the kitchen. And when they were coming in, I was coming at the same time. I said, stop. You can't come in here killing people. And he said, who are you? You the manager said, no, I'm a preacher. Get outside. I want to talk to you. And they followed me. I walked outside and they followed me. And I was putting tracks in their pockets and everything. And all of a sudden, like 10 squad cars came and took them away. And I, 
And I looked at Lisa and said, what did I just do? <laughs> Good night. <laughs> it was just that, hey, you know, God takes it over sometimes. You don't even think about what's happening. You're not, I didn't have one ounce of fear. And after I thought of what I did, I did. <laughs> and, and you know what? It's a wonderful thing. God, hey, when we stay in the Word of God and stuff, He gives us, He takes away fear. He takes away a lot of things that we just, our, our old nature just worries and worries and worries about. Hey, we hear about the government, how bad the government is. The government never saved any country. How would you like to have Herod for your president? Chopped John the Baptist's head off. You know what? Don't worry about all that stuff. Stay in the Word of God and ask God to use you. And let's have some old-fashioned repentance. Let's have a say, you know what? I want to get right with God. Repentance is just... God moving in your heart so you can say, man, I want to do what God wants. I want to, everybody in here has got a purpose. God created us for what? His purposes. Everybody. There's people you can reach I couldn't reach in a hundred years. There's people you have contact I couldn't reach them. But you can. If we love them, we pray for them. Don't argue with them. Just say, you know, this is what God says. You know what? When they're, all, when they're hurting, they all come to you. They will. I worked in factories. I worked in uh, West Dallas school system. And when people were hurting, they came and said, will you pray for me? And I could share the gospel with them then. They may call me everything. Jim Jones, Khomeini, uh, Saddam Hussein, uh, Hitler, all kinds of good things. Okay. But that's okay. We're here for Jesus. Amen. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes.